Want to elevate your Christmas lunch to the next level and be the hero of your family? Master sommelier Carlos Santos is here to pair your Christmas spread with wines of the world that won't break your budget. I thought exactly like, oh, I'm going to bring a Pinot Noir, but then I was thinking, well, no, I mean, most people enjoy drinking Shiraz in Australia, so I will bring a little turn down of uh, the Shiraz and bring a Syrah, which is more European style. From prawns and crayfish to turkey and Christmas cake, he reveals which and why the wines he's chosen will make even the Grinch of your family smile. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Welcome to the Silly Hat season, everybody, and Merry Christmas to one and all. Uh, Carlos Santos, great to see you in your Santa kit, mate. Absolutely love it. Uh, funny enough, I got uh, exactly the same as last year. You, yeah, you did. You kept them well preserved, I can see. Dusted them off out of the box of props um, <laughs> for this Christmas episode. Today, we are getting you to take us through the pairings of what a master sommelier would pick. So let's start with seafood on the topic of it. Um, prawns is something that I'm going to be having on the 25th. Um, it's going to be probably the first thing I eat before cl- getting into some classic turkey. What would you pick? And I have no idea, by the way. I, I just said to Carlos, you go cho- select three wines that you would have at your table at Christmas. And, and what have you brought in? Yeah. So, I mean, I picked for, you know, lobster or prawns. I picked the wine this time from Savoie in France. Uh, this is a very small producer, only two hectares. Uh, Adrian Berlioz, uh, La Pépi. And this is a local varietal called Jacquère. Uh, native varietal is the most widely planted grape variety in the region. Quite mineral, quite tart, but at the same time, really a lot of tension. It's not quite a Chablis, it's not quite a Riesling uh, or Chardonnay from Chablis, I mean, or a Riesling, but somewhere in between. Um, lovely, lovely freshness. And as I said, this is all uh, biodynamic. Uh, so really, really interesting stuff. Uh, Savoie. Savoie falls right uh, on a central eastern part of France, so on the border with uh, Italy and Switzerland. And uh, yeah, just just really interesting. I think it has plenty of minerality, plenty of freshness, plenty of acidity to uh, to really you know play with uh, with the prawns and the lobster. And especially if you're having a little bit of uh, um, uh, a sauce like a mayonnaise sauce and ketchup, whatever, like a, a, co- a cocktail yeah, cocktail a sauce, sauce. Yeah. that will be perfect with this lovely acidity. It's it's incredible. So that's I guess to talk about matching food as a whole. Um, you've worked in the world's best restaurants, and part of your job was to not only select and buy the wine for the restaurant, but you are doing it while having chats with the executive chef Correct. Um, to talk about what the new season of food is going to look like. And so how do you come up with the idea of pairing something? Because I actually did a post on um, our Instagram page at Gotsom where I paired some barbecue foods with some wines. And one of my things was with a cheese board, I had a Chablis. Um, and the reason I thought that that was a good pairing was uh, I didn't want a Chardonnay because of that oaky butteriness obviously chablis a chardonnay from france has no oak um so then you know you can still have that richness of cheese but i did get some comments back to me saying hey actually no i actually prefer having you know that buttery chardonnay with oak with the butteriness of cheese and 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 quince paste and whatnot i love i love the topic of cheese and wine pairing Mm. because if you look at the cheese board for example you know in some tree michelin stuff i mean alone go to the market victoria market or south melbourne market or any market for that matter where there is a cheese selection and look how much diversity of cheese there is goat cheese blue cheese hard paste cheese washed rind uh flavored with truffle whatever you know cummins how many cheeses are there yeah thousands you know so how can one wine or how can someone argue that a chablis is not good or chardonnay from chablis from burgundy is not good too much a cheese, there will be at least 10, 20, 30 cheeses that will be perfectly suitable for the Chablis. Gotcha. So Other it's not cheeses. fair to say cheese as an umbrella term when underneath it are so many varietals exactly. that you could match with different. Exactly. Yeah. If a Pinot had... might not work with this cheese, but you know, yeah. you know, a triple brie is perfect with Correct. it, for example. For example, a, a, a cheese from the Loire Valley, you know, like, and if you go to some of any of the markets, any of the good markets, if you pick, uh, for example, a Valency, it's a goat cheese that looks like a pyramid, and then on the top is kind of cut, uh, and it's, it's probably my favorite goat cheese. And uh, if you have that and you match it with a Sauvignon Blanc, you may say, oh, I hate Sauvignon Blanc, I don't drink Sauvignon Blanc. But if you match them together, you mm. will be like, oh my God, this is a magic combination, you know, because they grow together. What grows together goes together. I, I think I said this probably yeah, a few I times like last season, but, uh, but it really is like if you match 
uh, again, the goat cheese with the Sauvignon Blanc, if you have, for example, a washed rind, which is really quite fatty and creamy, maybe with the Chablis it will be perfect because Chablis is high acidity, so really rinse the palate. And then if you have a blue cheese, it's much stronger, much more flavorful and salty. If you match it with the Chablis, the Chab it will overpower the delicacy of the Chablis. So going back to Australia's Christmas as mm -hmm. well, um, you know, and cheese boards will be eaten. I know certainly that's part of our, you know, maybe Boxing Day or whatever, having a little charcuterie board and the leftovers of the day. So you've got a, is a Savoy is what you've chosen? Savoir. Savoir? Uh, yeah. So, Savoir, Jacquer. If someone can't find a Savoir, what's two other wine types that should go well with um, prawns yeah. and, and crayfish? I would go for, you know, I love Semillon. If you find an aged Semillon 2017, now are drinking really well or anything older, uh, great. I think that's a perfect one. You have examples from the Hunter Valley that are delicious. Mm, Tyrrell's Vat one. Tyrrell's Vat one, the Broken Mood ILR, all those wines. But you could also go for, you know, uh, for example, I mean, the Chablis, yeah, why not? Uh, are great because of the freshness, because of the acidity, the minerality, the tension. This could be another great option, you know, something a little bit different and not expensive. So I had a Savoir with my prawns. Great match, Carlos. You absolutely killed it. And I'm just high on life. My family's patting me on the back with such a great wine pairing. The turkey comes out and they go, what have you got for me next, Angus? And I say... Place of Changing Winds. Uh, this one is a Syrah. Place of what? Place of Changing Winds. So this is uh, a project from uh, Robert Waters. Uh, which is uh, uh, the founder of uh, Bibendum uh, wine, Bibendum wines. And uh, it's really interesting because it's, uh, well, in fact, they have the winery uh, in uh, Maston Ranges. And uh, that's where they produce their Pinot Noir, their Chardonnay and their Marsan. And then uh, about a little bit over 100 kilometers north, they have Heathcote. And that's where they, they make this wine. So it's very much uh, old world style, a Northern Rhone st style, not a Shiraz as we know it in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I'm not matching a Shiraz with a turkey because it's the delicate meat. And we could go for the Pinot Noir, we could go for the Grenache, we could go for- I have to say, I, I, I didn't know the wines you had. Mm -hmm. I expected that to be a Pinot. I'm like, turkey, Carlos is 100% gonna be a Pinot. In. Yeah, exactly. But the reason I love you didn't is because that's what I expected from you. Exactly, yeah. but I, th I thought exactly like, oh, I'm gonna bring a Pinot Noir, but then I was thinking, well, no, I mean, most people enjoy drinking Shiraz in Australia. Yeah. So I will bring a little turn down of uh, the Shiraz and bring a Syrah, which is more European style, which is fresher, it's fruitier, it's really quite elegant. While in Shiraz, you have this big, bulky, uh, heavy, jammed uh, black fruit aromas. With this type of style, you have more elegant, finer, more tapenade, more that black olive uh, that we find very, very commonly in the wines of um, uh, the Northern Rhone Valley. Croze Hermitage or um, Saint Joseph produce um, uh, appellations like this. And how much is this bottle in particular? Um, this is around 50, between 50 and $60 as well. Yeah. So yeah, a place of changing winds from Heathcote. Huge success. Everyone's blown away at my Christmas table. They've gone <laughs> Syrah with turkey. I just did not think that was going to work. Angus, you're a genius, and I give you no credit. I say, well, thank you. Uh, yes, it's all me. It's definitely not the Got Some podcast. Um, but this is where things can take a turn for me because I have never, to this day, and obviously we're recording this before Christmas, I have never, ever had a sweet wine in my 35 years at a Christmas event. Not a Boxing Day, not a lead-up uh, I, it's not part of my routine. So the idea of what you've bought here um, for that Christmas cake is is uh, pretty interesting. So a few days ago, I took my uh, my mother, which is now in Australia in holiday, um, to the market and we bought the Christmas cake. And uh, and I was like, we went back home and uh, and I was like, I wish I had a port at home now because we we had the co we we had the meal and then we we cut the, a little bit of the cake. And we had wine with the meal, but then I did not have a port. And I was like, I wish I had a port because this would have been amazing. But yeah, I picked uh, Noval. So this is a 10-year-old tiny port. And there's the old story about the 10-year and what is a 10-year versus a 20 or a 30 or a 40. Mm. What is a tiny port versus a ruby port? So that's the whole story. Um, no, a 10-year-old tiny port is, is, uh, is an approximation of what a 10-year-old should taste like. And a 20-year-old is an approximation of taste what a 20-year-old should taste like. So the um, so basically when Noval, which is the producer in this case, wants to release to the market a 10-year-old Tony Port, 
he has to he has to have the people from the institute of the port and wine oh. uh, come to the cellars uh, and taste the final blends and approve it as a 10 year old tony port by taste they could not be more distinctive they could not be more different if you taste a 10 year old tony port versus a 20 or a 30 or a 40 they are incredibly different mm. Um, and that's what's special about this this age uh, require uh, this age um, uh, indications. Uh, and the towny port is a port that it's exposed to oxygen through the oak barrel. Versus a ruby port is a port that is avoided from oxidation. So a vintage port or a late bottled vintage or LBV, as you see on the labels, are um, avoided from oxygen. So they will go to oak for a very, very short time, and then they are bottled, and the aging is done in the bottle. A towny port is the opposite. They are exposed to oxygen in this huge, large barrels of 10,000, 15,000 liters, and they age on those barrels for a huge amount of time. Of course, they start that deep, dark, concentrated, but they become amber and amber and amber, paler and paler in color. So with the Christmas cake, that fruitiness, um, you know, that bunch of, you know, the why, why does that mix so well with port over another sweet wine? Why is it not a... Uh, Di Botelli, um Botrytis Semillon or something, you know? It could be. It could be. I picked... Uh, it could be totally. The Bartoli, number one, novel one, would be perfect with it. The Muscat from Rutherglen would be perfect for it. But of course, this one is close to the heart. Portugal. So it's a port. A Savoir with our seafood. Did I say that right? Uh, Savoir, yeah, with the seafood, correct. Syrah for the turkey and a tawny port for our Christmas cake. That is how a master sommelier will be selling, celebrating his Christmas with his family down under. Down under. Uh, we'll put all the bottles in the link below so you can have a look at them a little bit closer. Um, but, yeah, there you go. That's how master sommelier is going to be celebrating Christmas and I'll be taking some notes from this and taking it to my partners in Sydney this year. So hopefully I do surprise a couple of them. A few of them are big wine lovers, so I've got a... I've got my work cut out for me, but I feel a little bit better with um, the experience of your knowledge. Awesome. So, so would, mate, and so would. Merry Christmas Cheers. to everybody.